Well guys, hello, it's Mike with Hardware Canucks and I really have to apologize that this video is a little bit late. We are launching this after Nvidia's embargo lifted. Why? Because we had five days with no power here in Montreal and no matter how much diesel we fed into our generators, they just couldn't stay on because even the gas stations were closed. But anyways, I wanted to talk to you and come down to a, maybe like a little bit of a different level here. That's because I know a lot of reviews, they always focus on the highest end components. But the realistic situation here is the fact that something like the RTX 4070 is going to be looked at as a potential drop-in upgrade for those older systems, the people with 8700Ks, with 9700Ks. But that's what I really wanted to get into here, so I'm going to be looking at the full gamut. How does this GPU perform on an older system and what type of improvements can you expect if you're rocking a GTX 1070 still or an RTX 2070 or even a 3070 for that matter? Is this a solid upgrade path or will it be CPU bound in some of these situations? The fact of the matter is a lot of people have simply waited things out. That's because the RTX 2000 cards didn't provide a huge leap in performance over the GTX series, not to mention they carried a massive premium. And the RTX 3000 series, well, they spent most of their life being overpriced by scalpers and opportunists on the retail side. I'm looking at you, Newegg. Actually, the first hurdle for a lot of people who initially bought into Nvidia 70 series years and years ago has been their steady price increase from one generation to another. And the RTX 4070, it is not immune to that whatsoever. While the 1070 started at 380 US dollars, there was suddenly a leap upwards when the RTX series was introduced. That was followed by a steady $500 price for two generations. But now we're seeing another $100 premium tacked onto that. RTX 2070 owners might be okay with this, but it's a bitter pill to swallow for GTX 1070 owners looking to upgrade into the same tier of GPU that they already have. Even if we factor inflation into this equation, it isn't pretty. There are, however, some benefits from a specifications perspective, like this being the first 70 series card to get 12 gigabytes of memory. On the flip side, it's operating on a pretty narrow 192-bit memory interface, but the massive jump in L2 cache allows a lot more information to be stored locally, so the core doesn't need to make as many calls towards the slower external memory. The other thing that should jump out to you is the RTX 4070's relative TGP versus previous generations. I mean, it isn't GTX 1070 level, but these power numbers are certainly a step in the right direction. But even though it's technically a lot more efficient, Nvidia decided to ship their Founders Edition card with a dual 8-pin to 12-pin adapter instead of the single 8-pin dongle on the RTX 3070. The reason for this is relatively simple according to Nvidia and that is to provide additional OC headroom. On the other hand, that might make it a little bit less of a potential drop-in plug-and-play upgrade for people with older power supplies. Luckily, some board partners are supposed to be shipping their RTX 4070s with single 8 pins on the card itself, so if you're in this situation, watch out for one of those. Still, the relative efficiency versus something like the RTX 3070 is pretty impressive since Nvidia is using a vastly upgraded power management backend on Ada Lovelace cores. Instead of striving to hit an absolute maximum, the RTX 4000 series cards automatically detect how much power a game needs for optimal performance. That means on average, this card needs a heck of a lot less power than others. And less power, of course, leads to less heat being generated. So the Founders Edition is a heck of a lot more compact than higher end RTX 4000 series cards. It sort of uses like a mini me dual slot version of Nvidia's classic cooler design. Leave uncertainty behind for something that is guaranteed to last. The new P20 series grants unlimited upgrades with roomy insides, dual 360s, metal front mesh for good airflow, and four models to choose from. Check out Antec down below. All right, so I guess this sets the stage for this one, but I need to go through a couple of little housekeeping items here because the way we approach this video is pretty unique and a couple of the elements do need a little bit more of an explainer. 
First of all, we're testing the Founders Edition of the GTX 1070, RTX 2070, RTX 3070, and RTX 4070 for a true apples to apples comparison. These are all installed into a test system with an i7 9700K. So an upper mid-level CPU that would have normally been paired with a 70 series card. And for those of you rocking a bit older 8700K, the difference between it and the 9700K in gaming is negligible at most. I also wanted to give everyone an idea of what a full system upgrade could bring to the table for them. So I'm gonna be showing results for the 40 70 paired up with an i7 13700K as well. So this all begs the question, can you just get away with grabbing the RTX 4070 and dropping it into a half decade old gaming system without having to worry about leaving performance on the table? Or do you need to look towards a full system overhaul to get the best bang for your buck? That's what we're about to find out starting with 1080p gaming results and we're gonna go from there. Well, in some games that are essentially GPU bottlenecked, even at 1080p, you'll be leaving little to no performance on that proverbial table with the 9700K RTX 4070 combo versus the 13700K. In these situations, you're looking at a clear doubling of the RTX 2070's frame rates and triple the performance of a GTX 1070. All this while also being substantially better than the 3070, all from a simple drop-in upgrade. Then there's a batch of games that'll still see a massive improvement in the average FPS department, yet the 9700K starts negatively impacting the 99th percentile frame rates. There's still a good bump over the RTX 3070 and leaps and bounds better than the older cards, but you do start seeing the benefits of current generation CPUs here. This is a situation that could lead people towards a GPU upgrade right now, while still understanding a new CPU and motherboard would net them even more performance benefits sometime in the future. Of course, the 9700K ends up getting topped out in some titles to the point where we aren't seeing much higher frame rates than an RTX 3070. It might not be pretty, but it'll be a reality for a lot of people who've chosen to stick to 1080p gaming. There's certainly gains from the 2070 and especially the 1070, but they're obviously much less due to the processor bottleneck here. Then we also ran into what looks like a platform specific issue with the RTX 4070 in Call of Duty, where it actually lost to the RTX 3070, and CSGO provided an awesome example of what happens when you run face first into a CPU limited situation where the only thing that'll dig you out is a processor upgrade. So that's where the 4070 lies at 1080p, but one of this GPU's main claims to fame, especially in this 70 series category, is its 12 gigabytes of memory. That should technically allow it to move up and down the resolution spectrum without much of an issue. So I guess we have to move on to 1440p to see if we can at least maybe eliminate some of that CPU bottleneck that we were seeing with the 9700K. And guess what? We've effectively removed the processor from the equation in the vast majority of games, so the RTX 4070 can stretch its legs even on an older system. So you really aren't giving up much versus even a Raptor Lake CPU in either averages or 1% lows. In short, this means if you're gaming at 1440p, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck with the RTX 4070 than you would at 1080p. So much so that it's hard not to recommend upgrading your monitor right alongside your GPU before biting the bullet on a complete platform refresh. For those who are already on 1440p monitors and rocking a 1070 or 2070, I think it's a pretty clear indication that if you're on a budget, the RTX 4070 can be a solid upgrade if you're willing to accept its steep price of $600. It isn't all perfection though, since there's still some games that struggle under the 9700K or simply have limitations that negatively impact frame rates when using an older platform. You'll end up running into much less of them at 1440p, but when you do, all all the on-paper GPU specs in the world won't end up helping one bit. And so far, this is a pretty straightforward, a pretty cut and dry situation, but I also wanted to add ray tracing into this equation.
version. Starting with the 2070, with a few exceptions, these first gen RTX cards really tended to struggle in pretty much every situation. The RTX 3070 featured some significant improvements in that respect though. The RTX 4070 on the other hand sees another similar jump forwards in performance even when it's installed onto a system with the 9700K. But some things need to be called out here. First of all, there's obviously something going on with the 2070s and 3070s performance in Doom. It feels like there's a driver issue here rather than the 4070 being all that much better. Also, while the progression might seem small in Cyberpunk, Hitman, and Callisto Protocol, that's a bit of a visual illusion created by this chart scale. Since we're still looking at a 30% to 40% performance bump when going from a 3070 to a 4070. Adding the 13700K results to this shows the vast majority of games don't benefit all that much or even at all from the faster CPU, but there are some exceptions like Spider-Man and Doom. Let's move on by also adding FSR and DLSS at their highest supported level on each card. And even the RTX 2070 sees a nice boost, and so does the RTX 3070. But there's a single exception here, and that's Doom, where performance actually decreases with DLSS on. That right there is a red flag for NVIDIA's driver team. Meanwhile, the RTX 4070 with DLSS and FSR scales upwards in an almost identical fashion to those older cards. But in some cases, it can stretch its legs a bit more. And adding the 3700K results to this shows the CPU gap remained pretty much intact from the last set of frame rates without any upscaling. But the RTX 4000 series does have one more trick up its sleeve and that's DLSS 3's frame generation that works in a few games. Naturally, that gives the RTX 4070 a big leg up in some cases. However, all those additional frames being generated don't actually have a negative impact on CPU performance. If anything, frame generation has actually allowed the 9700K to gain back a lot of its frame rate losses in Cyberpunk and Spider-Man. As a side note though, I do want to mention that there's a known bug in Spider-Man where frame gen actually sees a performance regression in some cases, and that's what we ran into with the 13700K results. All right, I know that was a lot of information to digest, especially if you simply wanna know if your existing system will or won't bottleneck a GPU upgrade like the RTX 4070. So let's distill all of that information into a couple of easy to understand points. And to do that, let's average out all of the games that we've benchmarked here. If you're gaming at 1080p, the RTX 4070 will feel like an absolute night and day difference over the GTX 1070 and RTX 2070, but its overall upper end performance does tend to get artificially kneecapped by an older CPU like the 9700K. Move to 1440p though, and the benefits of a modern 70 series GPU become all that much more tangible. As a matter of fact, unless you absolutely positively need a CPU upgrade for processor focused tasks like rendering, there are few, if any, gaming performance drawbacks to using the RTX 4070 as a drop-in upgrade at this specific resolution or above. In the end though, perspective is extremely important. So we can't forget that the RTX 4070 is a $600 US 70 series GPU. And Nvidia, they deserve all of the criticism that they are getting for continually moving the goalposts of pricing further and further into the distance for most people. And let's be honest, the people that this move hurts the most are the 60 series and the 70 series buyers, not necessarily the folks who have the disposable money or even the need for a super high-end flagship GPU. So look, if anything, I hope this sort of non-review style video ends up helping you make the best possible decision with your money possible. And I hope it's helped a lot of people who are holding on to those CPUs to say either, yes, it's time for a CPU upgrade or no, I can save some money and I can just have a drop-in upgrade for my needs. So anyways, I'm Mike with Haro Canucks and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.